good morning guys what's up and welcome back to another video i thought today i will do a little morning routine to show you guys what a typical morning during the week looks like for me my healthy slow but also like productive morning routine i am definitely going to the gym this morning but i need to make some breakfast because i'm starving so let's go do that so i have this really weird concoction that i've been making for breakfast lately and if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while you might remember a while back me eating muesli a lot because i'm a huge cereal girl and i had to get rid of sugary cereals and switch to a healthier alternative i mean i'm not going to say it's the same as eating like a bowl of fruity pebbles or something but it's way healthier and i feel so much better after eating this i would usually do it with a little bit of flaxseed which i have here and then blueberries but i've added another component to my concoction now that i brought this back and it's this apple cinnamon oatmeal I do not heat this up like normal oatmeal I literally just add some of it in because it just is another nice little texture to this so it's these three combined well mainly these two it's just a spoonful of this I do some cinnamon and almond milk and then I'll usually add bananas strawberries blueberries whatever fruit I have on top but we don't have any fruit because we have not gone grocery shopping so no fruit today. The bananas didn't look good enough for me I'm really picky I like my bananas green. <laughs> I used to measure all of this out but I don't anymore because I feel like it's fine. Let's do a little bit of everything. The flaxseed I will add, which by the way, this is such a good source of fiber and you would be surprised by how many things you can add this to and it does not have like any flavor. In fact, it actually makes the um, texture of this a little bit better. It like thickens it, I think. Let's do a teaspoon of it. The one I used to get was ground. This is milled. I don't know if that's the same thing, but the other one used to look like sawdust. This one, I think I like the texture a little bit better. And then like I said, if you have fruit, it tastes so good with fruit, but we do not have any fruit, so I'm just going to eat it like this. Voila. to snap fitness i actually haven't been to this gym in a while but i felt like switching it up and this gym is always way less busy than the one i usually go to so i figured why not also forgot my camera at home so this clip is on my phone right now my workout just ran in and picked up my starbucks order this is just a dopio ice espresso with a splash of cream and now we're gonna head home and get ready for the day i am back home now and i'm just sitting outside for a minute while trooper runs around and i'm listening to a podcast and drinking my coffee this is seriously the best i just love straight espresso shots with no sweetener or anything it's my favorite thing to drink like first thing in the morning it actually reminds me that i need to hook up my espresso maker that chad and i got as a wedding gift because we used it like a while back for a little while and then we wanted to like free up counter space because we weren't using it very much so i put it away and i would probably save money if i got that back out because of how much just like shots of espresso i like to drink but it is such a beautiful day outside i think i'm gonna work on my laptop out here today and i've been trying to listen to podcasts while i'm getting ready just so i can i don't know like educate myself passively while i'm getting ready in the morning or like watch youtube videos or something but specifically podcasts because i can learn something from them so i'm listening to boss babe podcast i just like this podcast because it's centered around female entrepreneurship and just being a boss woman and you know that's just the goal in life and it's a really diverse podcast like they have a lot of different things on here it's not just like being a small business owner it's like entrepreneurship as a whole they talk about goal setting body positivity like everything for women i love it what did you find oh <gasps> trooper no oh my gosh he just killed a lizard Let's go. I am out of the shower and I'm about to do my makeup. I thought we'd do a little get ready with me. 
I was trying not to wash my hair yet, but it was so sweaty. I think that dry shampoo was not even gonna help. Like, you know when it gets that bad that it doesn't even matter if you saturate it with dry shampoo? It was at that point. Even though I don't really feel like dealing with wet hair, I'm not gonna have time to blow dry it before my first meeting this morning. I'm like, whatever. I have two consultations this morning, which those are just phone calls. And then I have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a client at 10.30. And it's actually the first one-on-one -on -one session since I launched the Social Mastery program. So I'm pretty excited. I forgot to tell you guys, this is what I'm using. This is Pixie by Petra Flawless Beauty Primer. And I really like this. It gives my face a very hydrated feeling and it's also like super glowy. It's probably the best primer I've found that does that without making you look greasy after you apply your foundation. And you'll see what I mean. Um, I'm mixing these two. That's just what I've been doing lately. I use the Estee Lauder Double Wear and then I add a drop of this to it, which makes it a little bit better of a tone for me, but it also adds hydration to this because this can be a little bit drying, but I like the matte finish on it. I just need like a teeny bit, you know? I think there's a fine line between your makeup looking dewy and looking greasy and i think that greasy look you know when it's like a little too far i think some people can pull it off for me i look like i just rolled around in butter so i have to be really really careful with like what types of products i choose to use that are like that dewy finish you know or anything that says it's glowy but i will say that that primer and then a drop of this in pretty much any foundation is like perfect for me i'm like using the viewfinder as a mirror that's not gonna work. I'm sitting in front of my window for better lighting right now, but we're gonna use this because I can't see anything. And before someone comes at me for my face looking lighter than the rest of my body, I like my face to be a tone or two lighter than the rest of my body because naturally that's how my skin looks. Like my body is always more tan than my skin. But if I get close, you can see it's a pretty good match. My skin's a little bit blotchy and red right now because I just took a steaming hot shower. Also wanted to mention that a lot of people asked um, about my other job. Like, am I still working nine to five in the office, my marketing job? Um, and no, I'm not actually, um, not by choice. I am still working with my boss and doing some work for him like on the side, but I'm not like a full-time W-2 paid employee anymore. Um, I think it was good for me, but I didn't choose that. I didn't get fired, but I basically got laid off along with some other people in that department. But the strategic marketing firm that I was working for, they owned several businesses. And at one point I was working with one of the businesses, which I told you guys about. It was actually the pet company. Um, but then I transitioned into just doing like stuff on the marketing side and then that company I don't want to say completely failed, but it kind of did like all the strategic consulting side of things Which is what I was working on. They no longer do anymore um, They're working with a mobile app agency one of their other brands and some other stuff that they're doing but like the company that I worked for kind of went under and so obviously they couldn't pay me anymore so I don't work there it was very sad. Honestly, it never came up and I got this news in December when I was not vlogging at all. That probably did not help matters at all. Um, but that was when, you know, I went like three or four weeks without posting, honestly. It was around that time that I found out I was losing my job. So, you know, I'm just gonna be real with you guys and tell you, cause I know this is happening a lot everywhere. Like people are getting laid off all over the place. So many big companies are going through this stuff, you know, with the recession, I'm just like incredibly grateful that I still have YouTube as a source of income, as well as my small business and now my coaching program. And then I also still do freelance social media management. I have several streams of income. And so for that reason, losing that job wasn't like the end of the world for me. I have applied to other places, um, but I really don't wanna like go work in an office again. I liked how flexible that job was with me, like that hybrid situation, but really hard to come by hybrid. Um, I feel like it's like in office or remote. And a lot of remote jobs, there are so many freaking applicants for. Like I will go on LinkedIn and try to apply to something and there will be so many other applicants. I don't even think they ever saw my application because there was like 200 other people that applied. Like who's gonna have time to go through that many applications? So I just know, you know, it's slim picking right now like companies are struggling and I'm still really grateful for the experience that I had at that marketing company because I learned so much like 
they're the reason why I wanted to start consulting. I mean, I know I'm calling it like a coaching business, but it's still consulting. And it's because of that experience that I learned how much I love to teach people and help people in that way with social media. So you guys know, if you've been here long enough, then you know that like, I don't believe in regretting things. I think everything happens for a reason. And I think my short time working with them was nonetheless a good experience and something that I really needed at the time when I was taking a break from YouTube because of all my mental health issues. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of eyeshadow here. Oh, I didn't mention all the products I'm using because I'm too busy talking and I can't multitask to save my life. I think I linked most of them in my last vlog, so if you really wanna know. Otherwise, I will try to link them in this video. I remember back in the day, like this happening all the time because I've always been someone who gets ready every day and does my makeup every single day, like even if I'm staying home all day. I mean, obviously once in a while, if it's like a Sunday or something, I won't, but typically doing my makeup is just a part of my routine and it's something that I enjoy doing. It's not like a chore to me. And I always remember like women saying, um, like making comments like, oh my gosh, you must get up so early to do your makeup. Like, or like, I don't have time to do that. I literally roll out of bed and then leave the house in five minutes. And it's just like, okay, Good for you. I care about my appearance and I like doing my makeup. I'm not doing this to impress you or anyone else. I like doing my makeup. Like, what the heck? Has that ever happened to anyone else? Like, I feel like I just remember women always bashing me for, like, coming to work with makeup on. And they're always like, you have a full face of makeup on. Like, what the heck? Oh my god, what do you wake up at like 5 in the morning? Like, especially when I used to work in the ER. Now I don't wake up at 5 in the morning. It takes me like 20 minutes to do my makeup and it's a part of my routine. I'm sorry that you throw your hair up in a bun and don't care what you look like. You do you, I'm not judging you for it. Okay, the makeup is finished. Like I said, I'm not even gonna bother drying my hair. I'm just gonna let it air dry. Almost nine, so I am going to go jump on my computer now. I still have two discovery calls this morning and then at 10.30 I have a one-on-one -on -one hour coaching call. So I want to plan out kind of like my outline for that. And I kinda wanna share with you guys how I'm doing it. The group sessions are going to look a little bit different, but for one-on-ones, I created like this outline. So obviously I have to have time for like an introduction. And then I'm spending the first 20 to 25 minutes reviewing the social media accounts. So like what platforms they're on, what are their social media accounts look like right now um, based on their niche? Like what is their posting style? How frequently are they posting? Are they cross promoting their content? Do they have a website that they get traffic from? Are they doing paid advertisement? Is it strictly organic traffic? So I start to figure out all of that information. Then I have a Google doc going on the side where I'm gonna be taking notes the whole time, just anything that they tell me that's gonna be relevant for me building a strategy for them. And then following that, we go into strategy development where we're gonna be taking a look at what their goals are and building like a step-by-step -step plan to get them there and of course at the end we'll do a little Q&A this gives them a chance to ask me any questions that they might have had and what is going to take place over like the next 12 weeks kind of is determined in this first initial call so it's like an opportunity for me to figure out everything about them in terms of social media and their company a lot of clients that have signed up for the one-on-one -on -one actually have like a personal account they want to grow but they also have a small business account so we're going to be kind of building strategy for both of them and a lot of the components are the same, but some things are different, so. And then my goal is to finish every single session with like assigning them their homework for the week. So like what posts they need to do, what accounts they need to create, what bios need to be updated or website changes, just like assigning them exactly what needs to be done. Because during this call, I really want them to be focused. I don't want them stressing out on like taking notes. So that's why I'm taking notes, cleaning them up after the call and then sending them a summary of everything. It is kind of a lot of work, but I literally live for this. And I am so excited. I'm also really excited for the group sessions. And we are starting next week. So if you have not signed up for a discovery call, I am gonna be taking calls through the weekend. So if you guys are interested, sign up for a discovery call because you have only a few days left to join this next session. The following group won't start until like May or something.
just finished the two discovery calls that I had this morning and now I am making my second cup of coffee. Don't judge me. I really need nice coffee right now, okay? I have this one hour coaching call and I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous. But that is pretty much it for my morning routine. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have been requested to do a morning routine a lot and I have not done one in years. So I feel like my morning routine looks a lot different now than it did a while back whenever the last time I did this video. So thank you so much for watching and if you're not already subscribed, be sure to click that subscribe button and I'll see you in my next video.